in any art community, but New York is tough. There are so many artists, visual artists in New York, as well as so many uh, performing artists and uh, instrumental artists, that it's everyone wants to be here. Everyone wants to be in London. Everyone wants to be in Paris. I mean, that's where you want to hit it for, for notoriety and uh, just being known for your work. So it's, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Well, I always wanted to be an artist, uh, but growing up and looking at careers, many people told me that it's really hard to make a living being an artist, uh, or you can't be an artist. But I always had that desire to do so. I went through college, studied sports medicine, and when I got a job in sports medicine, I had some money left that I uh, had savings of, and uh, I started making art in the evenings, in the weekends, because I loved to do it. And I kept doing that for about three years, and I really loved to do it. So I actually, at one point, was doing a whole day job, like 50 hours a week, then going home, going to the gym, and going to the studio till 1 o'clock in the morning, waking up at 7 to be at work at 8.30, and start the cycle all over again. And I did that for about two years, and it was pretty tiring. What do I really want to do to be happy? Because my parents died at 52, and they... You no, know, they provided for us, and we had a great lifestyle, but I know they didn't love what they did for work. And I realized I wanted to do something that I would love to do for the rest of my life. It was by the passing of my parents that I said, I'm going to give this art thing a try. So with my savings I had, I s took a year off, a year and a half off of work. I said, I'm just going to focus on art and see if I can make it happen. And that's been, what, 13 years from now. I didn't like the structure of, you know, if you come in five minutes late, someone's going to walk up to your office and say, hey, look, you know, you're five minutes late. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I, I'll put an honest day's work, I'll work longer or whatever, but this, the, the controlling issue of working for someone, I had difficulty with. And now, having a completely free s schedule, completely flexible, as long as I do my work, get my work done, which I'm happy to do. I mean, I love this. So I work all day long and all night long. But also, there's a lot of pressure because you're not working for someone and the paycheck comes every two weeks. So you have to have the discipline and the stick to -itiveness. And sometimes, you know, it, it comes and it wanes. And if you're, if you're not working and not putting on a of work in, the paycheck doesn't come. This is, this is one of my many boxes here of items that I collect because I like them and I maybe only use them. And some of the other styles that you've seen in my studio that works on paper, I'll photograph these images or take photographs from the world, real world that I, I shoot and uh, I incorporate them. So I've had these. These are from a, a 1895 anatomy text. I have a bunch of books here, a bunch of other books uh, in my other studio, and uh, antiquated books. Again, I'm fascinated with them. Because you even read through them now and there's so much misinformation about medicine and science in these books that we've learned over the last, you know, century. Uh, sardine wrappers. Um, there's a bag of flour. Sugar container. Uh, Late. Pope John Paul when he was on the way out. You know, I have a, I have a couple pieces of artwork with Pope John Paul. Uh, some works with Pope John Paul and Lincoln I've used, and I actually um, will fire 22 magnums through the images with a connection of their assassinations, or assassination attempt in the case of John Paul. Uh, cigarette cartons I collect around the world. Um, just, you know, I really don't smoke, but they're fascinating. These items are made to... They, they're comfortable in your hand, you know? They're comfortable in your hand, they're beautiful. Uh, Lucky Strikes, my dad uh, smoked Lucky Strikes for years. And actually, there's a piece up there on the wall that has uh, uh, his favorite cigarette. He smoked for about 30 years. His ultimate demise was uh, lung cancer. And I use it many times as an homage to him. I use it because the packaging is gorgeous. It makes you, if you ever have one in your hand, there's something about it, even though if you don't want to smoke, it feels right, and it looks right. The composition, the color, the, the graphic design, the, the packaging design, uh, it's very intriguing. And a little piece of 
this tobacco and paper has, can have such control on your life and your family's life. The arches has a bit more feature. You have to, in a way, make those people, it sounds manipulative, but you need to find a way to make the people that are important that you want to show with, you have to make them think they discovered you some way. You have to make the power structure sort of shift so it appears that they made the discovery. So uh, if you, you can't go directly in and say, can I see your, can I, you see my portfolio? Uh, you can't necessarily just email someone up and say, you know, please come to my studio and take a look at, at, at things and see if we can have a show. You've got to network, you've got to sort of find ways around, maybe friends that have an in, and you can just mention your name in passing and then you make an approach that makes a big difference. So you have to be nimble in your marketing strategies. You have to be resilient uh, for a lot of rejections. Found art made into a work of art. <laughs> Here we go. I think we can get about $3,000 for this. <laughs> this will sit in some home on Park Avenue as part of the collection. See, these are, these Maybe are the Rebel collection will take it. He's just walking down any street. He is completely inspired by everything. Everything. Well, I go into dumpsters all the time. I everything find you look at is there's a possibility. Uh, is a possibility for mm -hmm. uh, adaptation or uh, appropriation for your art. I always yeah. bring stuff back here, and if I don't use it in a couple months, um, then I'll, I'll put it back out in circulation for someone else to, to find in a dumpster. Beautiful. I Transfer. love the way you've introduced the orange circle right there. That little touch of just a little bit. Yep. Yeah. That is a beauty. Look at that. That's 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 a lot of fun. That was, that was shot. I'd like to own that one right now. That's great. I love this. <gasps> See how? It, yeah. That's fabulous. And fabulous. And these are beautiful. And this is just a cardboard I find on the street. And then uh, house interior latex, semi-gloss, and then the polyurethane makes it glossy. So here, like some that, even back here. So these are just done on cardboard. Yeah, like here's one that's God, in process. Great. What I love about a lot of your work is like you just can flip it any way and it works. It works. The composition is just so excellent yeah, that you can just, just sure flip it and it, so, yeah. the balance is there, yeah. I don't Color think patterns. I've encountered an artist that can work in so many mediums and explore so many different <laughs> Uh, mediums and processes and pull it off so successfully because people, some people say, well, you know, you're all over the place. Yeah, you are all over the place, <laughs> but you're doing it really well. Thank you. You know, and I, I really have to congratulate you on that because there's a um, consistency in the value of, of uh, and, and the integrity of the art. Thank you. Have you ever smelled coal? Oh, no. Can you smell it? Oh, it's incredible. It's like, it's like, it's like Korea soap. Totally, like I'm in the, in the mine. Mmm, that's great. Can I like, touch it? Yeah. Yes. Wow. And of course, we and have that's that soft, that's called horrible soft coal. tragedy of these miners, in, miners in West um, Virginia. Yeah. Now, he was telling me about his grandfather was a coal miner, and he was inspired as a child. How did you, what, what were you saying? Well, I'd be working in a shop downstairs, and it was a dirt floor and the brick walls and very ill-lit, and would be working, creating things with his hand tools and have to fire up the furnace. So we'd go over to the coal bin, shovel coal into the furnace, and go right back in to working with dirty coal-covered hands with the woodwork and his other tools. So when he passed, I figured, I was like, oh, I, why did I think about using coal? <gasps> and it's so great, so I went to his coal bin uh, the day after he died, and I collected uh, probably about 40 pounds of coal. Look at that, and just, you know, the light catches When it's lit, it sparkles. It all sparkles, the facets yeah. of, the, of the coal <gasps> the dust. Facets of the facets of the coal. Oh, who knew that coal could be so gem-like and beautiful? It's, well, it's, it's the precursor to diamond. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't think about it. No, yeah. you don't think it's a about crystal, it. It's a crystal structure with the coal. Oh, yeah. I love 
love this piece. Okay. Cool. You know, I'm, I'm probably going to get in a situation where I may be borrowing your work for a 24-hour period and then coming to show back. Clients. That's great. Which is how I've done it. I find that when you bring the art to the client, if you can, if it's not too unwieldy and you can sure. get it in a yeah. taxi or whatever, um, which I'm good at doing. So uh, when you, these people are often so busy and they don't have a minute. Sure. So they Once really, you get it there. And when you put it right it in front stays. of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you learn to get, you get tougher as you get, as you move on and further within the industry. And some days it just hits and some weeks it clicks. And then sometimes there's weeks that you, you know, you, you just not able to meet or get your work seen. So you just keep forging ahead. And you have to be pr uh, prideful of yourself that you're doing honest work and you're dedicated to it. Uh, but I think there's, I don't know, I think it's, it's nothing magical to create art. It's just, uh, it's a desire, it's a strong desire.